Madam Speaker, let's be very clear. The confidence of Canadians is shaken. And the only way that we as parliamentarians can help to restore that confidence of Canadians in our democratic system is through an open, public, independent inquiry. We in the Conservative Party's Party have called for this very clearly, and we are once again calling for this today. But let's look back at what has happened in the past few weeks, and in fact, the past few months. And unfortunately, we in the Conservative Party have had to drag not only the government, but also the NDP kicking and screaming to hold accountable those in the government. Three times, three times, Madam Speaker, at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, our efforts to hear testimony from the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff were blocked by the Liberals and the NDP coalition partners. Three times that happened. Why? Why? Because they're hiding something. If they're not, open up. Allow the Chief of Staff to testify. We need to know what the Prime Minister knew, when he knew it, and why he sat on it. Why is that so difficult for the government to understand? Why is it so difficult for them to see that Canadians' confidences have been shaken? Certainly, I have lost confidence in this government, and I think a lot of Canadians each and every day have more and more difficulty trusting this government. And why do they uh, lose the trust in this government? Because they won't stand up and be clear with Canadians. And they're being aided and abetted by the fourth party, by the New Democrats. Because they're failing, the NDP are failing in their duty as opposition parliamentarians. The opposition, the opposition has a sacred duty to the people of Canada to hold... Order. I just want to remind members, it's not time for questions and comments yet, so I would hope that they are going to wait and take their turn then, that there's seven and a half minutes for the Honourable Member to do his speech before it's questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Perth-Wellington. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I thank my friends from the far, far corner of this chamber. And there's a reason why they're so far in the, cha in the corner. And frankly, in the next election, they won't be even be in this chamber because Canadians are losing faith in them to fulfill their role as opposition parliamentarians. It is our role as Canadians to hold... Order! Order! One more time. Order! I just want to remind members on all sides uh, to make sure that they hold on to their questions and comments and to their thoughts. They may want to jot them down instead of yelling them out. The Honourable Member Perth-Wellington. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I seem to have hit a nerve with certain NDP members in this House, but the truth hurts sometimes. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing, and that's what we have seen weeks on end at the Procedure and House Affairs Committee. In fact, over a period of three weeks, we listened to filibuster after filibuster speech by Liberal parliamentarians. Even one Liberal MP went so far as to say that the OC Transpo light rail inquiry was a, a good example of why we shouldn't have an inquiry. As though the OC Transpo is light rail should ever be an example cited in this House on anything, uh, let alone the need for a public inquiry on foreign interference in Canadian elections. Now I want to highlight something, Madam Speaker, is that a year ago, bureaucrats recommended this government the need for a foreign agent registry. A food bank, for example, has to register in order to lobby this Liberal government. But when bureaucrats recommended this for foreign governments trying to influence Canadian public officials, the Liberals sat on it. They sat on it for months on end. Conservatives took real action. We took real action back in April of 2021, before the last election. Our former colleague, from Steveston, Richmond East, Mr. Kenny Chu introduced what was then called Bill C-282 and would have required the creation of a foreign influence agent registry in Canada. Now we're finally seeing the Liberals come, come around to that, but they're not actually taking action, Madam Speaker. 
They're not taking the action needed to restore confidence of Canadians. And so that's why we need an open, public, independent inquiry. So, Madam Speaker, let's, let's be clear. We have heard testimony from some of the experts, some of the folks who have been in service to our country. I want to quote one example from the former Canadian ambassador. He said, quote, Australia has its registry of foreign agents, which requires transparency of Australians who act for foreign governments. The United States has the Foreign Agents Registration Act. It has also taken steps to prosecute people who have been found to be interfering in the business of Congress and indeed congressional elections. The UK has identified a person who was very active in British politics and funded several politicians as a foreign agent working for China. Those things send messages. Recently, we saw Britain leaning on Chinese consulate in Manchester, England, after protesters were dragged into the consulate and beaten. The result was that five diplomats left the consulate. They're taking action, but we aren't. End quote, Madam Speaker. And the former ambassador made a great point there. He cited other examples of governments taking action. But where is this government? How many diplomats have they expelled? None. Zero. Not a single one, despite having the authority to do so under the Vienna Convention. They have failed to act and have done nothing to make those who may be interfering in Canadian elections to make them persona non grata under the rules provided to us. I want to quote as well Charles Burton, a senior fellow. He said this, Certainly, the disinformation that was launched in the recent election, in particular in Steveston, Richmond East, at former MP Kenny Chu, was largely in the Chinese language and largely inaccessible to people who are monitoring elections. In other words, we don't have the capability within the Canadian system to deal with activities in the diaspora community that could affect election results improperly." End quote. So, Madam Speaker, let's be clear here. We need to stand up and protect each and every Canadian's democratic rights, and that includes Canadians from diaspora communities from around the globe. The misinformation, the disinformation, the intimidation that is being used on these, uh, on these uh, online uh, apps, on these online discussion groups in which foreign forces are trying to dissuade, persuade, and, and improperly interfere in our elections need to be stopped and it needs to be addressed. But what we've seen time and time again from these Liberals are efforts to deny, deflect, and then finally delay. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing delay. Not until the end of May will we actually have an opportunity to hear whether or not, or maybe, perhaps, kind of, if we feel like it, have a public inquiry. We are calling for a public inquiry, and we're calling for it now, to stop the delays and actually take action to end foreign interference from the Communist Party in Beijing. Now, what we're hearing again from different members, including members from the government, is let ENSICOP look at it. Let ENSICOP do it. But let's remind, remember, Madam Speaker, ENSICOP is not a committee of Parliament. It does not come with the rights and privileges that Parliament enjoys. And in fact, Madam Speaker, I would draw the House's attention to the 2019 report from ENSICOP. In, in particular, paragraph 298. The Prime Minister was given this report in August of 2019, before the 2019 election, and yet did not implement the recommendation from paragraph 298, which included uh, informing and training members of Parliament on foreign interference. Now, of course, because the Prime Minister gets the report first, before every other Canadian, he sat on that report, and it was not made public until 2020, after the 2019 election. So, Madam Speaker, forgive me if I don't have faith in the Liberals using a secret committee where they hear secret testimony and a report that goes first and foremost to the Prime Minister, believing that would be an alternative. The only alternative, Madam Speaker, is a full, public, independent inquiry where Canadians can have their faith restored that we are not being impacted by foreign interference into Canadian elections. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here, here.